It's your open source advocate and I'm back and I just previously put out a, a video on Rocket Chat as an update of how to install it and get it running. Um, and Rocket Chat's an amazing system so there's a few things that you can do with Rocket Chat that, that I want to go over but I was asked specifically about white labeling Rocket Chat which means taking it and getting your own logos and, and changing the colors and, and kind of making it your own. Um, you know, setting it up so that it looks more like your company's own chat system. And there's a lot of things you can do to white label Rocket Chat, so I kind of wanted to go through that. The other video was getting a little bit long, so I wanted to make sure that I was covering this um, and giving it the attention that it deserves. I didn't have all the, the stuff that I wanted ready, and I wasn't real, um, wasn't real sure what all I could do as far as white labeling, so I want to go through that now. I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and all of my patrons over at Patreon. Seriously, you guys make this so worth it for me to do these videos every week. I really, truly enjoy it. And I just can't say thank you enough. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe. Let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job by subscribing to the channel. Plus, you'll get notified when I have new videos coming out. And finally, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, give it a like. Just click on that thumbs up. And that way YouTube knows that you like it. And they'll pass it along to other people that might enjoy my content as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you again. Let's get started. Um, so when you come into your Rocket Chat interface as administrator, you can click here and go to administration. And when you start talking about white labeling, you can scroll down here and there's this section that says assets. And inside of assets, so first you can turn on this SVG for fav icons. It's up to you if you're using um, vector graphics or not. I, I don't use vector graphics for, for the most part. I probably should start because then they would scale better. Uh, but you know, once you get that, then you've got all these different things that you can go through and actually kind of pick your own graphics and set up your own graphics. Now, the deal is you want to have somebody who's pretty good with graphics uh, programs, or you want to be pretty decent with it. You know, you can use GIMP, you can use all kinds of things to make these graphics. It doesn't have to be anything you know super high end. Um, and GIMP is amazing. Don't get me wrong, but you could use something a lot simpler as well. So when you start looking at these things, you see that there's like 16 by 16, 32 by 32, there's a 192 by 192. So if you're talking about Android, for you know, Chrome, if you're talking about, uh, you got a 512 by 512, if you're talking about the Apple icons, it's, it's 180 by 180, the touch icon for Apple Touch. Um, the second touch icon is, is also 180 by 180 for uh, pre-composed. And then as, as you go down, you just keep seeing there's a lot of different icons that you can actually um, specify here. And they, a lot of them tell you the sizes. Now, this one doesn't specify what size it needs to be. So this is the main logo that you see in the bottom left corner. So I'm going to replace that one right now just to show you how it's done. And I've got quite a few um, logos up here, but I think this is the one. So I've got two versions of this. Um, I've got, sorry, I've got this one, and then I've got, and it looks the same here on the side. Uh, but one I actually called large, and then the other one isn't. So... Um, I've got two versions of this logo here, so I'm going to use the, the large one, and, and it's really not that big. It's only 51 kilobytes. So when I do that, you'll see that it gets this little thing up here, and then it updates, and you can kind of see what it looks like, so it shows you kind of a preview of what you uploaded. You can click on Apply, and then Update All Clients. Now, it tries to do that, but you'll see when I close this, it, it still shows the Rocket Chat um, symbol, so you just hit the Refresh button, and it will reload with your updated logo. So this is nowhere near the size that it needs to be. Um, so you actually need to get this and, and turn it into a logo that's going to fit a little bit more nicely here. Um, and you may have to do a little bit of playing with that since they don't tell you what the dimensions are for it. But um, that's kind of their start of how you white label the system. So as, as we move down again, we'll, we'll go back to assets here. Um, there, there's more stuff that you can do. So this can be the login background. Um, so I'm going to grab this and I'm going to use the open source, I think is what it's called, um, banner is where I've got it. Let me see if I can spot it here in my list. Yeah, right here. So this is a JPEG. I, I think it'll take this. Let's see if it'll take it. Yeah. So there we go. There's the open source banner. Okay, so we're going to go and we're going to apply again and then we're going to refresh. Um, we're going to close this out. We'll refresh the system. Now you're not going to see it here on the, on the chat system because this is for the login screen. So I'm going to go over here to the left side and I'm going to log out. And now you see this is the background that we have, which is the open source uh, banner instead of the other background that they had set. So when we log back in and you saw here, <laughs> I kind of passed it by there, but we can go back out. Uh, let's log back out real quick. 
So you also see my, my logo here is, is not just the logo in the lower left, but it's also right here. So again, you know, making this fit a little bit nicer, it's going to look a little bit better. But this, you know, so we're starting to white label this thing. Um, I've got the open source banner. The banner's not quite the right size. It really wants to save my password there. Um, and then here's, here's the login screen that we get to. And I can just click on log in now to log back in. So I've kind of started white labeling this chat system a bit. And you can kind of see how that works. So this is going to keep prompting me about my end-to-end -end encryption. I've told it, you know, don't. So when you log back in, you come back here, and now you've got your logo down here. Now you can also change colors and things inside of uh, Rocket Chat here. So I'm going to go back into the settings. So next you can use custom sounds. I'm, I'm not using any custom sounds, but you can go in here and add custom sounds. So you would click on the Add button here. And then you can go and find a sound file that you want to use and it shows you that it's an mp3 file is what you need to use and then you can set those custom sounds and then users can go and select those sounds for different things that they're doing so if you've used other chat systems you know they have a ding and sometimes they have a a, a, a knocking sound or they have a shaker sound or you know they have all kinds of different sounds for, for chat systems that you can set for different events which kind of let you know hey this thing happened without you having to look over here and see what it was you'll kind of know that was a channel that was a direct message you know whatever so setting up your own sounds is, is possible in here as well. Um, as we continue down, you can also set up custom emoji. So if you want to set up custom emoji for your site, then again, you go here and you click on plus, and it's going to ask you for the name of the emoticon or the emoji, the alias for it, and then you're going to go and again, upload that emoji, and then you're going to save it, and you'll see it show up in the list. Now, each time you want to add another one, you need to click the little plus button. So this will stay here. Click the plus, add another one. Click the plus, add another one. And you'll see the list build as you go. And if you get a really long list, then you can search that list using the search box. And it's, again, super fast um, because of the back end. So also you can add custom user statuses. I added a few here so that you can kind of see what they look like. But I put, you know, I'm around, which means I'm online. I put at lunch, which means I'm away. And I put in a meeting, which means I'm busy. So this just maps to statuses they already have in the system but you can kind of set your own and you can set multiple ones so people can kind of set their own statuses in the system um, and again to do that you click on the little plus you type in what you want the name of that to be and here are your options to map it to so if we just say offline um, you know done for the day right and then hit save and now i have another status in here that somebody can choose to use or i can choose to use so when you're talking about custom emoji and custom sounds, you can choose the type of file system that this that this is going that that Rocket Chat itself is going to use to store those things. Um, GridFS is is selected by default, but you can also use the file system. So GridFS just says, "Hey, I want to save these things in MongoDB um, and use Mongo um, in order to go grab those things and pull them up as my assets." Um, it's a really fast system. Now, if you're just using this for personal use or for a small office kind of chat or, you know, for smaller teams, that kind of stuff. And when I say smaller, I'm talking 100 to 200 people. This GridFS is probably going to be fine. If you're, if you're talking about trying to use this for 10,000 users and things, you might want to switch it over to the file system and let the file system actually host all of the, the files and things like that and, and let the system kind of pull them that way. Because when you start getting into larger groups, um, you start getting into larger amounts of things you want to store and, and just so on and so forth. Um, so MongoDB may not be the best place, and GridFS, you know, is kind of a, a a connector, I guess you'd say, for MongoDB to make it easy to store things in the file system. So uh, again, if you get really, really large groups, it may be better to to switch out of GridFS. So another aspect to white labeling a system is actually kind of customizing your emails. So after you've set up the SMTP part, which I showed in the first video, to be able to send those emails, there's a whole lot of other email settings in here that you can actually change. So going in and kind of setting these things up, you, you see here that they're using a little bit of uh, HTML to make it a nice, rich e a nice rich email. This is just default stuff that's in here already. So for instance, if somebody changes their email address on the system, the system's going to send them a verification email to say, hey, your email address has changed. It's going to send one to the old email. It'll send a verification email to the new email. And it's going to look something like this when it sends it to the old email. It says, hey, your email address was changed, you know, that kind of thing. So you can go in here and kind of set up, you know, a little bit more and make it more custom to your, uh, to your liking. Again, you know, this is part of the white labeling is actually making it yours. Um, you know, if you forgot the password. So you've got all these different sections in here that you can kind of go through and check. You know, header and footer information that you want for your emails. So if you want to customize the header and the footer of the emails, like my company, when they send me company email, um, I get header and footer information that is very specific to my company. Um, you know, so it becomes really, really simple for me to go through and check that and make sure I know exactly what, who it's from and where it's from. And it, 
it's just very um, specific to them so I can tell pretty quickly by looking at it if it's uh, if it's probably valid not saying it is valid just saying if it looks like it's probably valid um, so so again as you go down so direct reply is enabled um, you know you, again you need to read about direct reply up there it's kind of a different thing but uh, as you come down, you get uh, you know invitations, so you can create invitations into your chat system instead of allowing just simple user sign up. And there's a whole bunch of things you can do to make it not easy for someone to sign up intentionally. Um, so you can create an invitation form email to say you've been invited to join this Rocket Chat system or this chat system. You know, please click here, that kind of thing. So as you're going down, um, continuing, you know, offline message. So you know, use the deep link URL format is just an on-off kind of switch. Um, your password has changed again kind of like your email changed same thing you can set that up to be more um, specific to your site privacy you can turn on privacy um, registration so you can turn on registration turn off registration if you have a registration on then this is kind of the registration email that they're going to get and you can kind of see what the what the what this looks like and here's the site URL so you want to kind of keep this tag for registration because they need to uh, this puts the link in so that the user can click it and that will take them back into the site to say they verified their email address, basically. Um, registration via admin. So again, this is kind of the same thing, just for admin use. We did SMTP already. And then you get into style, so you can set up styles for your emails and kind of set up how you want the email style to look. And then you can say only plain text emails. Just check that box, and none of this even matters anymore. Um, as you move down, you can set subjects so that the subject is kind of defaulted as to what it's going to send whenever you send an email from the site. Um, and then you can also set, you know, mention email subjects. So if somebody gets mentioned, so, so this has several different subjects. Direct message email subjects. So if you get a direct message and you're not online, after a certain amount of time, it'll send you an email to say, hey, somebody messaged you on this system. You might want to, might want to go check it. Um, same thing if you get a, a mention. So somebody does at your username in a, in a channel, then you'll get that same thing. And then, you know, uh, all email subjects so mention all so they do an all in, in the channel instead of just you and then finally verification so this is what we we're talking about you know verify yourself to make sure that you're an actual person and that you're supposed to be signing up for this site so there's quite a bit of stuff just under email that you can do also to white label the system so layout now this is a lot of the stuff that you can really do to, to change this and make it your own and you want to you know you want to do small changes just my personal way of doing things I do small changes I save I, I go out of administration I check it or I have another tab open where I'm logged in um, on a second tab and I go and refresh to see what my changes look like as I go so that I don't accidentally change something and make it look terrible or you know I get the background color and the text color the same and nobody can read it so right here this is a, a really important location like color yellow alert right you kinda saw that on that other thing dark yellow um, you know alert light uh, you know success with is a green so you've kind of seen those things popping up up there to, to tell you it's it's successful um, so in fact here we can change this let's just uh, click it and it gives you the color wheel so I'm gonna make this a, a much darker green so you can kind of see the green there and we're going to say select and I'm going to um, come up here and save my change and we'll see if it actually takes effect on this time I don't think that's quite the right color dark green um, so let's save I mean let's refresh and then there's that dark yellow they're talking about so let's go back into colors and let's change alert message primary background we'll, we'll just make this a little bit darker is all for a second and then we can go back um, we'll say select huh, it didn't change my success thing there that's interesting because I expected it to um, Let's put it back to a little bit lighter green. Uh, maybe it didn't. I'm just like not able to tell that it's the darker color that I wanted. But let's save it. Looked like the same color to me, but maybe that was lighter that time. So maybe it did change it a little bit. So anyways, you can set the colors. You can play around with the colors and see what the colors look like and kind of figure out what colors you like. There's a lot of things you can set in here as far as the colors go. So you have to kind of look link active. So this is text colors when you're talking about this. So it's color white, color blue. So you need to look at this and it says expression. You know, up here it says color. So you can kind of change those things, but you want to make sure you don't change it to something that doesn't work either. Um, and then you can set reset the section. So if you make a bunch of changes and you get to the point that you're looking at, and you're like, oh, I hate this. You can just click this button. It'll reset it all back to the defaults, which is great. Content-wise, so again, you know, when you look at the home title, the main, 
um, you know, show the home button. So that's all the stuff that's in the interface over here. Um, in fact, here, we'll just open up a second tab because, you know, we'll just get in here so that we can actually see the page. So it's got these buttons up here, you know, that, that do different things and, and all that, you know, so, so you can kind of change all of these aspects about it. So it's like this one has this white background. I might want to go in and make the white background transparent, change these colors or change this color so that this doesn't blend into it. And then, you know, just, just try to overall make things look better. That's where you really get into the white labeling side of things. Um, adjusting your images and adjusting things to work better. So by proceeding, you're agreeing to use, and, and again, you know, login terms. This is all stuff that you can set to make it really your own system. You can use custom CSS. I, I am not a CSS guru, but you can absolutely use custom CSS to kind of go through and override the CSS that they use uh, in the system. Um, you can use custom scripts to do the same thing. You can select your own fonts. If you don't like the fonts that they use, you can go through and kind of say, you know what, I don't want to use this. I want to use something a little bit better. Um, like... <laughs> Segway UI, I think this is a Microsoft font. Uh, Roboto, I think, is, um, you know, a Google font. So you've got a lot of different fonts here that they're trying to cover everybody. So they've got Ubuntu, they've got everything, right? So it's not just going to use whatever, it's not going to have not, it's not going to not have a font. It looks like they've tried to cover all the font categories that they can. But you can add fonts or change fonts if you want to. Old colors, so if you like their older colors, I guess, you can you can do that. Um, old colors minor and then the user interface itself so there's a lot of on off things that you can set here and you've got so display roles whether or not to display the user's role uh, group channels by type yes or no use full uh, you know full name initials to for the avatar so when they start talking about that so like here you see m for mick in texas you could actually if i had a last name set instead of my just my name you'd see like everything for it um and then uh, use real name. So you could say use their real name. Don't use their, their nickname. Uh, click to create direct message, so on and so forth. So you've got a lot of options here that you can do um, to really get everything working properly. And kind of white label the system this way. And then allow special characters. You know, uh, so, so much stuff that you can set in the system. Um, there's just tons of stuff right here under this particular section um, that says layout. So when you get into the rest of it, that's pretty much it. Um, there's not a lot more that you can do as far as white labeling. You can, you can change settings for a lot of these things, but really that's, that's kind of the biggest parts of white labeling the Rocket Chat system. I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, give it a like, subscribe, tell your friends about it, let them come along on the journey with us, and I'll talk to you next time.